Good morning, friends. It's Alexor again. And today we're going to look at Path of Exile 2. Now, I know I'm striving away from last epoch, but I decided because ARPGs are seasonal, that I will also have other content on my channel other than just last epoch. I will still do build guides, especially also off season, because people need these. I can tell by the views I get on these. Um, but yeah, I also want to look into other games because eventually I will be playing Path of Exile 2 for sure on this very channel. So, and I saw this trailer and it's about a necromancer, or like the witch necromancer. And which is one of my favorite classes, also in Last Epoch. So I decided to check this one out. Um, everyone has been doing this already, so I'm late. Doesn't matter. Maybe you want to have my views on that thing. All cool. So expect more other games on this channel as well. Additionally, I'm just going to do more content, not less. Last Epoch just going to be more. All right. <laughs> so let's just dive in. What? Perfect set 2 actually has to offer. Also, one thing I need to add to this. I never actually finished Path of Exile 1 once. Okay? Some of you will be like, what the fuck did you just say? Yes. As for some reason, Path of Exile 1 just completely bypassed me in a big thing. And people told me I should play Path of Exile 1 also on stream. But if I do this, I need you guys to actually guide me because I have no clue whatsoever. I played to Act 8, I think, just getting through the campaign with the Witch. Uh, but I have no idea about all the things. I know even if you play 3,000 hours on Perfect Exile 1, you only have like 20% of the game. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, Perfect Exile 2, from what I've seen so far, looks a little bit different. Um, I'm sure they will have a lot of depth to the game as well. Not as much as PoE 1, I don't think so. But from what I see, it seems to be more geared towards um, the casual player, which is great. So let, let's just dive right into it, what they, what they have to say. It's a bit loud, isn't it? I'm certainly not supposed to be here. How exciting. <laughs> I mean, that looks really cool. Hi, I'm Jonathan Rogers, game director on Path of Exile 2, and I'm here today to talk about the Witch. Most classes have access to some kind of minion, but if you want to control an army, the Witch is probably the class you want to pick. In PoE 2, most minions don't require summoning manually. This scepter gives me a couple of free warriors, but it's also going to give me another resource called Spirit, Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. So I just equipped this staff and then they just spawn right away? That is cool. So I don't even have to... Oh, I love this. So I don't even have to um, summon them. Which is, if you think about last epoch and you play an army build, which, a lot of, which has a lot of minions, you're just constantly being busy summoning them because they die all the time. So this gives you the possibility to just um, not care so much about the summoning. You can actually play other spells like debuffs and, and shit. On whatever minions you want. That's cool. You can see the spirit bar above the mana here. On the skill screen, you can pick the composition of your army. This is a level two area, so I can only afford one of the. Oh, wait! Well, it can change this all the time. Oh boy! Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, I see, I see. You can just choose con constantly which uh, minions you want to have. And they cause spirit to, to channel or like to summon. Okay, I see. That's cool. So you can switch this up depending on the situation you're in. Damn. Damn. Okay. I'll pick a sniper for now. When minions die, they'll be revived automatically so long as no other minion has died recently. So before your next battle, all your minions will come back to life. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to care about minion control because I hate also, micromanagement. <laughs> Tell them to move to a specific location, attack a specific enemy, or even open a chest or door for you. Nice. It's actually useful. We also have temporary minions. This spell is called Unearth. If it kills a monster, or if it hits the corpse of a monster, it creates these bone constructs. They can't take many hits and have a limited lifetime, but you can build up a real army with these. That's sick. 
While my minions are attacking, I'm going to use some debuffs on the monsters too. The first one I'm going to use here is Contagion. If a monster dies with Contagion, it spreads to nearby enemies. Each time it spreads, the damage increases, so it's a good idea to try and keep the infection going. If any corpses are infected when you summon a minion from them, the minion will be infected as well. Each time they hit an enemy, they'll continue infecting them. <laughs> okay, that's the COVID build, isn't it? <laughs> if you raise the corpses that are infected and they hit an enemy, they will be infected as well. I guess that's a blue thingy, right? That sort of dark blue. That means they're infectious. That's funny. So you can actually do a COVID build. I'm, I'm just going to make a thumbnail with... COVID. <laughs> army of infected scorpions on your side. I also have another chaos debuff called Essence Drain. This one does even more single target degen. Degen. If the monster is infected with contagion at the same time, then the Essence Drain will spread as well. This can turn into a okay. real plague of destruction. Yeah, that's a real COVID build. Another minion type I can summon are zombies, but they require a corpse. Can we just admire for a second how life, good die, this game looks? Fairly tough and can bolster your minion numbers. Like the potting effects are really good. Many minions also have command skills. I can order my sniper to deploy a gas arrow on the battlefield to get some damage over time. Wait, how do I do how do you do this? Then? Where is it? Does it say in the bar? I guess I can just put a skill on the bar then. But what I like about this is that you can just focus on other things with your character while your minions they get summoned, they die, they get resummoned. Um they attack, they can even do things for you, you can give them commands, that's cool, but mostly you can also use other spells. Because if you look at that epoch, I mean, we only have five uh, skills on the bar compared to Path of Exile, but you have at least three, if you run an army build, you have at least three or four skills on your bar that are just to summon the minions, which you will never use then. For example, the Bone Golem just sits on your bar and you rarely use it because it usually survives everything. So this is just a dead skill on your bar you can't use, right? And because if you don't put it on your bar, the minion dies. So you have to have it on your bar. So that's a bit annoying. So basically, what you do with minion builds in in Last Epoch, is especially with army builds, it has a lot of uh, minions. You're just running around with your character, not doing shit while your minions attack. And I always thought that this is kind of boring because I don't have to do anything. I just have to kite around and dodge damage. But it's just boring, right? That's just really boring. Um, so I like this. You can actually do something with your character. Oh, these blue ones are the contagion, the, the COVID guys. Now I'm going to summon a skeletal arsonist. They can throw little fire grenades, but they also have a command skill that can detonate your own minions that are low on life. Oh, sacrifice, basically. Yeah, okay. When you see the red indicator, use the skill and the minion will go boom. <laughs> will go boom. It's particularly nice on these bone constructs because they expire quickly anyway. So, let's take all these tools we found and fight the boss of this area, the Carrion Crone. I wonder how the skill tree will look in this. Will it be the same as in PoE 1 or will they steal a little bit from last epoch? So you can go deeper into one specific skill. These effects look so cool. They're not like super flashy. They're subtle, but very well, like there's a lot of attention to detail. Well, like. So that's how many minions you can get at level two. But let's see what minion gameplay looks like at a high. One thing I must say though is honestly, um, I guess the reason they like, for example, the UI I think still looks pretty bad actually, old-fashioned. Personally, I think this looks very weird. I guess they wanted to keep this sort of um, feeling from PoE one which I can totally understand as a design decision, makes sense and mostly is better than making an entirely new UI, especially when we were looking at the character screen earlier. But I think it looks a bit old. Higher level. This is a level 30 area. I don't know. I want to try a different group of minions. I still have my trusty warriors, but there's a lot of different types to choose from, like brutes for stunning or ice mages for freezing. And most of them come with their own special... Like if you look at this, it's just it's, it looks so bland as sort of a UI. Like this is not really important to the gameplay, right? I get it. But I am a guy I like when things look good in games. Um, I'm a very visual person. 
and I'm very focused on beauty and beautiful things. Oh, symmetry, I should say. And this is sort of not giving me that vibe. These all command skills. But if the gameplay is fine, I can um, sort of let that go. Like a couple of storm mages to shock enemies, a cleric to heal and revive my minions, and a bunch of reavers as well. Reavers do high damage, and you can also enrage them before battle. This slowly kills them, but my cleric should be able to keep them alive. While my minions are attacking, That's cool. I can use channeled skills like Bone Storm, which creates a devastating volley of sharp spikes. But that's cool, you have a healer all the time. So you can actually use like decaying effects on your minions. The ability if lots of your minions die. You can summon a lightning storm to strike the location of every dead skeleton in your army. Damn. Just like that. <laughs> and this guy's just in the back, consistently healing. <laughs> nice. These let you impale one of your skeletons on a big spike of bone in order to buff all of your other minions. That's like an AOE buff? One okay, I see. Used here is called pain offering. It makes all of my... I also like how the effects are subtle, but they still easily, like, see seeable. Like, I can tell, okay, all these red guys are buffed by this impaled thingy. Then there's the blue, the thunder strikes you gain from the, that one guy. And the green is the cleric healing them. So it's, it's subtle. It's not, like, all over the place. There are no icons above them all the time. You can just tell by the visuals. It's very well done. Like, the visuals are really great. Like, this game looks so good. After the battle, we have some extra corpses. Except you are. Those to go to waste. <laughs> Profane ritual consumes a corpse to create a power charge, which can power up some of my other spells. If oh, I charge. use them to summon zombies, I can create super zombies, which are more powerful. You also don't need a corpse to summon them. Okay. Sure. Die. Huh. <laughs> I can also use power charges to channel Bone Storm. If I do that, it adds a devastating AoE. Oh, is this... what the hell? Fuck. Also, you can't go through this. I guess it hurts you if you walk through it. Boss monsters can be pretty devastating, like this Faradun Impaler. There's a wide variety of abilities and is pretty tough to defeat. It's just a regular rare body to a better mob. Damn. This is a bind spectre gem. Using it, I can take the body. Like, let's be honest here for a second, guys. Let's just be brutally honest. Does this look good? I mean, this, I guess, is cool, these these fingers in there, that kind of fits the theme. But, like, that's just just a 2D regular thingy on the side. I don't think this looks very good. Again, it's not necessary, right? It's not the main key thing of the game, I get it. And maybe they will even update it. But I think the UI, especially this, it looks a bit outdated, honestly. ...of any enemy and capture its spirit so that I can keep it as a minion. Any monster can be captured, but the spirit cost depends on how powerful... Any monster can be captured. But doesn't that make the Necromancer absolutely OP? Because they are very strong rare mobs or bosses, I guess. And you, if you can just take them as a Necromancer and, and no other class can do this, isn't this just superior to any other class? Powerful the monster is. It takes a lot so of no, no. such a powerful enemy. She so got that. To summon a lot of my other minions, but it certainly seems like Oh, there it is, Spectus. Does he also have the skills? If the Spectre dies, just like any other minion, it will respawn after a short time. Oh, you don't lose it. It actually has the skills? Oh, wow, okay. Damn, that is insane. That is insane. Necromancer just best class always. I think it's time to fight the boss of this area. Best class always. You are relentless. And that makes you I like the music. The end of Marrakech tyranny is nearly at hand. Get back in your hole. What is it, just vomiting on them? <laughs> Damn.
How does this look so good though? How do they keep doing it? Like default looks pretty good, right? But this just looks really good. Really good. How are they doing this? How do they keep making it better? Also, the gameplay of the Necromancer is just so much fun. It seems, anyway. If you can just steal any mob, inspector it, that's just insane. And this is what I like. While your minions are attacking, you don't have to worry about summoning them or they're dying. You can just do other shit. You can use other spells. And this is so great for the Necromancer. So you actually have to do something. If this would be last epoch, what I would be doing would just be running in circles around the boss all the time. Because I can't do anything else other than constantly resummoning minions. That is awesome, man. I need more mana. Alright. Oh, shit, pretty shitty drops though for that guy. <laughs> None will stand in my way. Damn, dude. I'm so hyped for this game, it's insane. How do they keep doing it though? Oh, the access late 2024, eh? How do they keep kicking ass consistently with Path of Exile? It's crazy, man. How do they do it? This looks so good, man. Especially Necromancer. I didn't care much about the other things we, we saw already. I mean, it looked cool. Like, Druid is not really my, my playstyle, but Necromancer, man. Perfetto, magnifico. This is so great. So great. Anyway, guys, I'm super hyped for this. It's going to be... Damn, later this year is going to be tough. Because I'm sure we're going to have last Epoch probably... Maybe they can manage 1.3 this year. Probably going to be 1.2. But when this comes out, 1.2 is probably going to already fade out. So we can look into Path of Exile. October is going to have the Diablo Falls expansion. I'm definitely going to look into this. So there's a lot of good stuff coming in ARPG land this year, man. A lot of good stuff. Anyway, guys. Thanks for being here. Tell me if you liked it, if I also talk about other things and look at other things, or if you hate me for doing this. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of it, what you think of Path of 2, as it looks so far, and what you're going to play if it's the Necromancer or the Witch or whatever it's going to be. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good time.